Well, they do say that every journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, and my journey to the magnetic North Pole did start with a single step, but it ended more than two and a half million steps later, each one of those taken painfully one at a time. Now, if you've never heard of it, I took part in, in something called the Polar Race. This is a race that takes place every two years. You cover 650 kilometers as the crow flies, on foot, navigating yourself from northern Canada, the town of Resolute, to the magnetic North Pole. Now, most of the journey is actually over the Arctic Ocean, which is frozen at this time of year. So I don't know too many people who can walk on water who are still alive, but I'm one of those. Um, and you're expected to, to walk on water, technically, cover the 650 kilometers while navigating yourself in a team and uh, towing a sled with all of your own equipment in it. And that weighs about 65, 70 kilograms with food and fuel. And you're expected to do all of this at the average temperature of minus 40 degrees Celsius. Now, if you think that sounds like a strange thing to be doing, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Lee Swan and I am a chocoholic. I love chocolate, and I'm going to put it out there. I also love high heel shoes. And I really enjoy a good glass of good red wine. So what would somebody like me be doing thinking about walking to the magnetic North Pole? Sounds like an odd thought, and you have to ask yourself why. What I'm after is an extraordinary life. I would love to be extraordinary Lee, not ordinary Lee. And in thinking through what extraordinary Lee means to me, regardless of what anybody else thinks, I thought, well, Extraordinary Lee has to start by being balanced. She needs to be confident mentally, emotionally, and physically, right? Now, mentally, emotionally, I have no problem with confidence. Physically, not so much. So, of course, the next thing to do would be to enter yourself into the world's toughest race <laughs> in order to overcome your shortcomings on the way to Extraordinary Lee, right? And that is what I did. So ordinary me from the suburbs of Johannesburg, trying to become extraordinary, I had to do a bit of training you'll appreciate. I uh, needed to basically learn to ski, never skied before. I needed to become an endurance athlete, learn a few things about polar bears, and team up with some guys who would do this with me. And I did, so I found two strapping young men to accompany me on this journey. And off we set on the polar race, 2011, about this time last year. Now, when it got out into the Arctic, I'd actually expected it to look like this. I mean, how hilly can the frozen Arctic Ocean be, right? Ice rink all the way to the pole is what I'd expected. <laughs> Nice big blue sky to welcome us, but in actual fact, it looks more like this. The wind is so powerful in this part of the world that it carves out the ice so that you're skating along the top of a meringue, and it just gets worse and worse. Huge boulders of ice to navigate across. So the real skill is a combined skill, delicate balance, and absolute brute force. You're having to get yourself and your 65-kilogram sled behind you over this kind of terrain. And really, it got worse and worse. And the thing that makes me sick is that these pictures look so beautiful, but setting out in the morning with a view like that really did terrify me. And what's amazing is that we, on this journey, stayed in a little tent together, and I thought, jackpot, camping with two guys, this is going to be good. Didn't realize we would be wearing the same clothes for 30 days, so the tent was a pretty stinky place. But the amazing thing about a photograph like this is actually that we are camped in the middle of the Arctic Ocean here, in a dinky little tent on a six-foot-thick piece of ice, which floats on top of a four-and-a-half-kilometer-deep black ocean. And this is the place that we call home. Now, of course, when you go to the Arctic, you need to know a thing or two about cold. It sounds obvious. They tell you minus 40. That's our average temperature. Get used to it. And there's no way to actually appreciate what that means until you've been there. When you get off the plane, actually, when you land in the Arctic, they say to you a few things. Firstly, keep your mouth shut because your tongue will freeze. And secondly, blink more than normal just so in case your eyeballs freeze. So if I blink a lot while I talk to you, that's why, not because I'm a bit of a dodgy character. And I learned about minus 40 the hard way. I actually had one occasion where I needed to make some adjustments to my kit, took a glove off, so I had a bare hand, made the adjustment, awkwardly in my skis, fell over, bare hand down on the ice. Now, they say to you, an, a hand will freeze in under 30 seconds if it's out in the cold. I can tell you that if it's down on solid Arctic oceanic ice, it can freeze in 15 seconds. It took me about 15 seconds to get up, 
put my hand round, try to get the glove back on, and all the, all the uh, blood had basically drained right out of my hand. It was frozen solid, and it took me two days to get feeling back in my hand. So I really learned about minus 40 the hard way, and you only need to learn that lesson once. And then a couple of days later, we got ourselves caught up in the worst Arctic storm of the 2011 season. The temperature dropped to minus 79 degrees Celsius. The wind had picked up to 14 knots, which is 72 kilometers an hour. And here we were, Arctic novices, trying to make our way to the pole, as you do. And of course, we got ourselves caught up in whiteout conditions. There were actually two people standing in the middle of that photograph, which you can hardly see. So you could hardly even see your own hand, never mind uh, you, the company you were keeping. And so, of course, we pitched the tent, as you do, and it was up skewly. We were stuck in that tent for two days. We had to dig ourselves out of s snow cover after the two days. Um, and really, when we were in the tent, you weren't convinced the tent was actually going to hold together in this crazy wind. And uh, so, of course, it was quite a somber mood, and I thought, well, I'll just try and think of home and happy thoughts, and thought about my mom, as you do. She's got a very thick Glaswegian accent. And I recalled our last conversation, which she said to me, stay strong, stay safe, and we love you. And whilst those words actually did warm my heart quite a lot, it's also quite shocking to realize that you may actually be recalling the last words that your mom ever said to you if you don't get out of this situation which is quite disturbing. But thankfully, a new day did dawn, and we had, done about, we, we had about 300 kilometers to go to the pole, and thankful we were alive. We raced those 300 kilometers, and eventually I reached the magnetic North Pole. Now, we did this journey in 22 and a half days. We ended up winning the polar race. How is that possible for an African girl? Thank you but only by a margin of about, about two and a half hours, so it was pretty tight. And in this moment, I became the first South African and African woman to reach the magnetic North Pole. And when I looked down to actually see what the time and date was, it was 5 to 5 in the morning. The date was the 27th of April, 2011. This was the, you know what that means, <laughs> this was the 17th birthday of our very young and beautiful democracy in South Africa. This is Freedom Day in South Africa, and I can tell you for sure there is no colder place to celebrate a 17th birthday than the magnetic North Pole. But really, why I did all of this was obviously on a journey toward extraordinary. I came to realize that actually, after this whole journey, all of the limits that I had on myself physically and otherwise were in my head, and that I was addicted to my limits. It made for a very comfortable life, actually. And so today, having gone on this journey, I face my addiction to limits every single day. What I would ask you is, when are you going to face your addiction? Thank you. Thank you.